Hi, this is Ken Rimple of Chariot Solutions. I do our training and mentoring services and one of the areas I focus on is Angular. Angular 2 has just released its complete bottom-up rewrite uh, and wanted to show you a demo today of using RxJS, which is a reactive JavaScript API, uh, to do audio synthesis. We are using Angular 2, RxJS, Web Audio, and also Web MIDI to control a number of input sources generating synthesizer audio and even drum machines using these observables from RxJS. So let's take a look at the demo and then we'll review what we're doing. So let's take a look at this thing first of all. Uh, we have this uh, audio synthesizer uh, that has various types of input keyboards. These are just little Angular 2 components that have various scales of notes on them. Um, so the main keyboard is your typical piano keyboard. And as I touch the notes with the touch screen, with a touch uh, event, they make noise. And it's a multi-touch, so we can do three, four, even a whole bunch at the same time. So that's neat. Um, also, because I'm a drummer, I had to go through and build a drum set. So these are all my drums. Kind of interesting and nifty. Um, all of these sounds are being fed in uh, using events through something called an Angular, um, I'm sorry, more an RxJS observable. And an observable is an object that implements the observer pattern. And so what that means is as I touch something here, the event feeds in the next note to the observable. The observable is then handed off to an audio synthesizer. The audio synthesizer makes the noise and sends it out through the pipeline to the actual output, which is a speaker or mixer in this case. So that's kind of neat. Because we're using observables, and because observables are something that you can tap into and pay attention to uh, from various parts of your application, one of the things I've done is created a little tiny sequencer. Uh, it's very primitive, but what it's doing is when I click on record, it suddenly starts subscribing to all the notes that come through the observable. And as those notes come through, it records their time and their note values. And when I hit stop, that stops. It's basically just an array list or a list. Uh, and then when I hit playback, it plays them back in sequence with the same number of offsets of milliseconds. So for example, stop, playback. Again, nothing here is super difficult to grasp. When you're programming in Angular 2, you're dealing with these observables. That's the hardest part of the whole thing. So learning RxJS is really essential to getting this kind of immediate feedback out of uh, an Angular 2 set of systems. And so anytime I type on here, it's immediately feeding an event through to an observable. Actually, technically, the term is called a subject, which is a type of observable that can generate events. Then the synthesizer hooks into that to listen for note values. The note values come through. The synthesizer then sends those notes through to a destination using web audio. The destination points to an output device like a mixer, and we have our output. Now, moving a little further into the demo, um, I wanted to also do something with an electronic device, like an external keyboard type of system. And Don Coleman, our uh, director of consulting, um, is really into IoT devices and Arduinos and things like that. And he mentioned this thing called the Bare Conductive Touch Board, which is this thing down here. Uh, and it turns out that the Bare Conductive Touch Board is a MIDI output device. Uh, there's one sketch or Arduino piece of code you can use to output MIDI content from this thing. So what I did was in addition to taking observable content from here, I created an Angular 2 service. That service hooks into the MIDI audio uh, feed, or it's not really audio, but it's a MIDI, MIDI input feed. And the MIDI input feed in the Chrome browser exposes all MIDI input devices. And what I've done is accepted the first one in the chain, which is the only one I've connected. And these little bare conductive touch uh, points uh, electrostatically notice sensing, and they send a note value or they send a MIDI note value through the chip through USB to the computer. And so now I can do this. All of it is very responsive, very quick, doesn't really pause for anything. 
And then on top of that, because we were building a demo for South by Southwest last year, uh, or the end of the beginning of this year, um, Don had built this neat little device for putting some poten potentiometers or range dials uh, into uh, another device that I basically cannibalized, hooked into analog inputs and ground and voltage so that when I turn them, it changes things. So the first one on the left, which is the one of the two I have hooked up, the left and right, is a volume control. Very quick. And I'm still just basically cannibalizing a MIDI note number, uh, a MIDI message, with uh, a message number that I've picked for this pot. And I then sent the value of the pot from 0 to 127 as the note value. So as I'm turning this, it makes the volume scale from basically 0 to 1 in web audio from 0 to 127 of the potentiometer. The one on the right, um, and, and I should say that the way this one on the left works is the audio oscillator is one thing that listens to the observable, and that's what generates these. But they hook into a destination in web audio. The destination in web audio uh, has a audio compression node hooked into it so nothing gets louder than the maximum. And then it has a gain node, which is like your master volume level. And I've hooked up so that the audio destination service that generates the output subscribes to this observable and listens for changes in that potentiometer. And as it gets louder, it increases the gain. As it gets lower, it decreases the gain. So that makes two different services, an oscillator service and synth service, and an audio destination service that both listen to this observable stream. And it works the same way for this and for the drum set. So. I can only play, um, but I can fade down the drums as well. Pretty neat. The next thing is I want to be able to change the waveform of the synthesizer. So as I'm playing, right now that I believe is Sawtooth, I want to be able to change it from a hard or soft type of waveform. So as I turn this dial, there are four positions I'm looking for, four ranges of positions. That's one synthesizer oscillator. That's a square wave. I believe that's triangle. And then sawtooth. So there you go. So we've got uh, this dial is being listened to by the synthesizer node, the one that does the oscillator. And it's setting the default waveform for the next time it generates a note. So as I'm generating new notes, it gets a new default type. Okay, so there you have it. We've got multiple types of input devices feeding a chain of events through an observable, actually called a subject in, in Angular 2's RxJS system that it's using. Um, so I'm using a subject to generate these events. That is the observable that it subscribes to in the audio synthesizer for both note values and for control input all coming through the same observable. And also I'm using that to trigger another message, which is basically playing different audio samples. And those samples are all coming through the same observable as different objects coming through. One's a note on object. One is a trigger object to play a certain trigger. One is a volume change object. Another one is a waveform change object and so on. And with one observable, and one chain of events, I'm able to control an audio synthesizer. So that's it. We're using Angular 2 and Observables with RxJS to deal with input coming from multiple sources and figuring out where to place it and deal with it on the inside of the application. You can see it's very reactive, very responsive, and it's a nice tool in your toolkit for dealing with quickly changing systems. For information about this and other topics, you can take a look at our website, chariotsolutions.com. Take a look at our blog section and see what we're saying about these technologies. And also, remember that we teach Angular 2, React, and a number of other technologies as well. And that's at chariotsolutions.com training. Thank you.